search engine, Tesla Trump connections. Search engine, Donald Trump's nuclear uncle. This is awesome, you guys. This information was just, just brought to my attention a short while ago, and I did some research, connected some dots, and I am presenting this information to you now. Also, do your research, and let's add upon this. I think this is pretty cool. Now, what do you think of when you hear about Nikola Tesla? Here's what comes to my mind. One of the most amazing inventors, way ahead of his time, and a lot of that technology has been suppressed. Back in 2013, I had a chance to do an awesome 3,500-mile motorcycle trip. Did it solo. It was incredible. I meditated for hours and hours on the road. That doesn't sound right, does it? I was focusing on the road, but you get my point. Now, I met the people that actually live in the house that was built over the house where Nikola Tesla used to live in Colorado Springs. And the way that I met these people, I was on my motorcycle. I was driving in the area. A friend of mine sent me a screenshot of the street that the house was on. And I, I drove past the street a couple times. I saw an older couple walking down the street there with their granddaughter. And um, they were looking at me fu kind of funny because I was driving kind of slow looking for the house. You know, and I don't blame them. <laughs> and I, I finally stopped and I said, hi, you know, my name is Rex Bear, And I'm looking for the house of Nikola Tesla. And the guy was really cool. He said, yeah, we, we live in that house over there. That's the house that was built over where Nikola Tesla used to live. There's a barn in the back there. And we talked for a few minutes. Really nice people, you guys. Super nice folks. And the gentleman told me that there was uh, some items, actually, and equipment still in the shed that was in the back behind the house that was there for many years. And it was picked up just a couple years prior to me speaking to him. So I thought that that was just amazing. But to make a long story short, I met the gentleman that lives in the house now over Tesla's old location. And the Trump connections with Tesla are incredible. So if you look up nuclear uncle of Donald Trump, you're going to see some really incredible connections. Well, first of all, Donald Trump's uncle was brilliant. And if you read the article that's available, you can actually go to, I would read the one on the newyorker.com, Donald Trump's nuclear uncle. And I would also go to the article, Trump has a strange connection to Nikola Tesla on Business Insider. Because when you read about John Trump, and how smart he was. He was, he was a brilliant engineer in, at, for MIT. And he had access to the files that were found in the hotel where Nikola Tesla died. Very strange circumstances. That entire scenario is kind of veiled in mystery. It's clouded in mystique. Well, John Trump got these Tesla files. And I am wondering what type of technologies and stuff was done or has been created since getting access to those files in conjunction with everything else John Trump must have had connections to. Now, another thing that I find fascinating about Nikola Tesla is I'm going to read a few more of his inventions. I mean, the, you know, the death ray machine. It can melt hundreds of airplanes hundreds of miles away. This was in the 30s. Thought recording devices. That was one of the inventions that he had worked on for many years, and there's a, not a whole lot of information you can find out about this, but I do have some screenshots of some old articles about the thought recording device that he was working on. But how about that earthquake machine that he built in 1898 that weighed a few pounds, and it almost took down the entire building, multi-level building that he was in? It was a small oscillating machine. X-rays, electromagnetic motors, Can you imagine a thought recording device where you you go into some booth, you plug yourself, you like put your hand down on some LCD screen, the thing picks up your thoughts and it displays it for everybody to see and then it records it and it sends it back to the, the Wi-Fi cloud so that any buddy that claims to be a researcher or wants to purchase that information for commercial purposes would have access to your thoughts. How much fun does that sound like? 
You know, Tesla supposedly didn't want to give this information over to the military because he was afraid of what they were going to do with it, and rightfully so. And that makes me wonder if maybe something happened to him, like if he was taken out so that maybe there's a certain faction behind the scenes that wanted these documents, so they used their goons and their minions for their bidding. They got access to this stuff because the FBI did get access to all this stuff. And one thing interesting is there's a specific organization with the FBI at that time that dealt with only off-country, like espionage-type stuff. And they're the and that specific program with the FBI got access to these files. Now, there was a recent file that was declassified that I was able to scour up on the web. And you can go ahead and screenshot that and read through it. That has some in, inter, interesting information about the death and the location and the hotel, etc. I think it would be great to see these technologies that Tesla had almost 100 years ago. Think of the opportunities. This could really make America great again. We could be a technological force, cutting edge, not so much industry. We could think more towards technology. You know, the conversation that I had with Alexander the other day from Jerusalem. I mean, the guy's brilliant. I'm sure his IQ is probably in the 170 range. Very smart. Very well educated. That's one thing that I appreciate about many cultures and countries overseas is the education system. They seem to care a lot more about their people and wanting to give them truth and information where they can dissect things themselves and, and come up with truth, not just theory. The entire education system, in my opinion, at least the public system, needs to change and be updated. Because that's the future, you guys. That's the future of our country and of the planet. And let's create a bunch of Teslas. Let's create a bunch of Nikola Teslas and spark the interests of kids at a young age to want to go out and build things and invent things and help people and come up with solutions and ideas and opportunities instead of just this dinosaur corporatocracy ideology of marketing, sales, consumerism, profit, 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 Wall Street, consume, etc. Now, all of those things are good if not in, if, if they're not too powerful and going the wrong direction. I mean, the stock market can be a very good thing. Very good thing. Sells, good thing. Marketing, good thing. The problem is when it's based on a consumer-driven society that is using these old-school technologies because the ones that Tesla came out with and many others have been suppressed, you know, free energy, etc. well, that's why we have to live in this consumer-driven society. If we had the opportunity to have free energy, abundant energy, we wouldn't have to go to the gas station. We wouldn't have to spend a percentage of our income on fuels that are dug up from the earth, which actually cause health issues, which cause problems for the planet. It would be a completely new reality. Imagine that. Imagine not having to be reliant on these giant utility companies that kill the planet destroy biology, destroy plant life, and make billions and billions of dollars doing it, literally making a killing. Free energy, Tesla-type energies, getting off of this petro system, literally dinosaur system, it'd be incredible. It would be a whole new world. The problem is, with as much power and influence and as many jobs and connections as there are to the petro industry, it's hard to shut it down. And I can appreciate some, you know, I know people personally that have had to find other jobs in different industries because they were in the oil industry. And the oil industry is really hurting right now in the States. And clearly I can see why. There's been townships that have been destroyed from the fracking that goes on around the world. 
You know, another very interesting connection that I found. So not only is there the connection with Donald, President Donald Trump's uncle and Nikola Tesla, right? But then let's type in Tesla Trump in a search engine. And what you're going to find is a whole bunch of articles that have came out. You know, here's one on CNBC. Tesla fans say they are canceling Model 3 orders over Musk's Trump connection. Tesla CEO Elon Musk won't quit Trump's advisory council. Trump has a strange connection to Nikola Tesla. Tesla fires German supplier, says it's not to please Trump. Tesla's Elon Musk, wrong for CEOs to quit Trump advisory council. People are canceling Tesla orders because Elon Musk. This is incredible. So not only do we find this really strange connection connecting the death of Nikola Tesla, not the death of Nikola Tesla, but the access to the information that Nikola Tesla didn't want to give to the military. Tesla comes out of nowhere many years ago, starts a private space flight company, and a car manufacturer with beautiful cars that have 200-mile radiuses on batteries. That's unprecedented. That was five times the closest car at that time radius-wise, which was the Prius. Looks like a shoe. Not nearly as fun to drive with a 40-mile radius. Do you think that there could be many things going on behind the scenes that we don't hear about with many of these universities and prestigious individuals? I used to think, well, you know, I was thinking this 10 years ago when Teslas were running 200 miles. I was thinking, why are other manufacturers, why are other car manufacturers not doing the same thing? And why is Elon Musk given the opportunity to do this? Why has he not been, you know, taken over somehow by somebody that works in the petro industry? And I know many other people thought the same thing. So these are all just questions that come to mind. And if you want to look at an image of one of the towers that Tesla put together, this one was in Rhode Island, or not Rhode Island, I'm sorry, Long Island. That was Nikola back in the day, obviously. But this is some schematics. And a lot of this stuff you can find, there is a, the Tesla Society that will have a whole bunch of papers and documents that have been either declassified or, or brought back out for the public. Now, I want to kind of leave on this note, tremendous new power soon to be unleashed. This was an article that came out saying also that for his 78th birthday, he's working on revolutionary power projects used to complete the process for photographing thought. And then I found an article from the late 1800s with Tesla saying he was doing the same thing. So it's interesting that over a course of about 40 years, there was a lot of news articles and even in the magazines, etc. about Tesla. And then for whatever reason, after his death and after all these weird corporate connections and strange unfoldings, essentially... You don't hear much about them. Other companies get big. Corporations get big. Different technologies come out that aren't nearly as cool. That are a lot more self-reliant. Or not self-reliant. A lot more. They make you more reliant on those technologies, essentially. So it fits into this consumer-driven society. And eventually, it's going to turn into the Lorax film or the Lorax book from Dr. Seuss where there's just nothing left to pillage. Pretty soon, people are going to start consuming themselves. And that doesn't even put into account the nuclear stuff we got to worry about right now, the radiation, the fallout, these old, dilapidated nuclear facilities that are on their last leg, and they just keep slapping Band-Aids on, sticking their head in the sand the next day. Now, if there's somebody out there that has information on the Tesla thought reading 
recording device. I'd be interested in that because in all reality, that kind of stuff is very possible. I mean, they've even got commercial applications now or residential applications. You can purchase these game combo packs that you wear like a little helmet and it can pick up certain instructions just via thought and eye movements and, and certain movements of the body, etc. So really fascinating. want to bring this to your attention and get your opinion on it. And maybe we can open up some more doors and opportunities and ideas and thoughts because really that's what these are about is to stimulate thought and ideas. I don't claim to have the answers here, you guys. But here's what's really cool is I've noticed that when we do some of these thought-provoking podcasts, somebody might reach out from five miles away or 5,000 miles away that has key information to what we're talking about. And on that note, I want to leave a, a positive thought set here. Having the skills and health to survive is absolutely the most important component for surviving a reality of uncertainties. And you know we are definitely living in uncertain times right now. Resources, tools, equipment, vitamins, supplements, food, clean water, or ways to get clean water is also very important. If you're in a position to prepare for a future of uncertainties, apocalyptic events, walking dead type situations, or maybe just economic type collapse similar to what's going on in Argentina and other places, what are some realistic solutions? And what are some ways to offset the consequences of all the environmental pollution that many of us are bombarded in on a constant basis? I've handpicked a few sponsors that meet these requirements. GetTheTea.com. Feel fantastic. Pick up the best of the best in natural detox and health products. I love this stuff, you guys. I've been talking about it now for a while. I really do appreciate GetTheTea.com. Also, there's a few essential components for tactical gear. If you have a miniature bug out bag, or if you don't want a bug out bag, you just want a few essential tools that are good for self-defense, good for seeing in the dark, good for other applications such as this really cool tactical pen that you've got access to that not only has a blade on one side, it has a light, it has a, a window breaker. Now, the another, another thing too about this flashlight that I keep bringing up, it's got 1,200 lumens, which is about double the brightness of the most powerful, largest mag light that I've seen, which weighs a lot more. I mean, the thing's like a brick. Well, this one specific light that I'm talking about, it's got this strobe mode and it's got three different brightness modes. So if you put it on strobe mode and, you know, if you want to use it for like a self-defense, you point it in the eyes of somebody that's coming after you or something, somebody's trying to mug you or rob you or attack you. Well, it could momentarily blind them. And there's a lot of states that they're very strict on gun laws, and there's a lot of countries that you can't have guns. So, you know, this is just another piece that I think is good to have for anybody. And you don't need one of those three and a half pound giant flashlights to carry around. It'll fit in the palm of your hand. So that is the one tac tactical gear. I'm going to leave links for all of this stuff, you guys, in the video description box. Foodforliberty.com slash Rex Bear is literally the best of the best in non-GMO foods. 25 plus your shelf life, plus these premium liquid vitamins and minerals, which digest in your body a lot easier than the capsule form. They've got organic family packs of food, ranging from one mil to multi-years worth of food for multiple people. And I like the fact that it's organic. And then if you're also looking to diversify, if you kept track of the stock market back in 2007, 2008, if you saw the signs of the time, if you were keeping track of precious metals as well, the real estate market, the auto industry, those are a lot of different barometers that you can use to check the temperature of the health of the economy, in my opinion. Well, I'm looking at the Dow right now at an, you know almost an all-time high. We're hanging out there in the 20000 range. Gold, silver, precious metals are priced very conservative, in my opinion, for the possible uncertainties. And if you have the money, if you're looking to diversify, if you've got a lot of the other resources already in your, you know, in your portfolio, and if you're prepared in many other aspects, I think that that might be a good option to, to look at, to look into. And you can also get a free ebook. I'll send you the link to that. Noble Gold Investments is who I would recommend. I know the owner personally. It's a great reputable company. They've got great prices, rock bottom prices on their bullion. Good, 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 sir. I mean, excellent service. And anyway, so that is my shameless plug. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for all your support. Thank you for all your kind words and constructive criticism, critical thinking. I appreciate it. Have a beautiful day. Question everything and be the change you want to see.